Hi, I'm Alex from Tailscale, and I'm here today to talk to you about TSIDP, or Tailscale Identity Provider. This is a lightweight OIDC OAuth identity project, and it is native to Tailscale, so there's no need for sidecar proxies or any other weirdness. Just give it an auth key, and it's good to go. It'll speak Tailscale natively right out of the box. The reason this might be interesting to you is that you can integrate OAuth and OIDC flows into many, many self-hosted applications, and they don't even have to be running Tailscale to use TSIDP. But in today's video, I'm just going to show you how to integrate TSIDP into Proxbox. Now, a few months ago, I did a video on how to use TSIDP with Proxmox. I'll put a link to that up here. However, it's broadly speaking, a completely out of date video now because TSIDP has been broken out of its original Git repo. It's now in its own standalone repo. Ta-da! And also now we provide an official Docker image as well. So let's make a start. What do we need to do this thing? What do we need to use TSIDP to log into Proxmox with? Well, first of all, we need a Proxmox installation. I have one of those right here. And then secondly, we need somewhere to run the TSIDP application. Now, now how do I phrase this? I'm going to break the chicken and egg rule today by running TSIDP directly inside the Proxmox instance, inside an LXC, admittedly, but I'm going to be using TSIDP inside Proxmox to log into Proxmox. Yeah, I need to get a spinning top, don't I, for this one, but demo environments and all that. So, you know, right now I log into Proxmox like this. I use the standard Linux PAM authentication, username and password, et cetera, et cetera. But I've already got an identity. I'm, I'm already logged into my tailnet up here. Why can I not just reuse that tail scale identity to log into Proxmox? Well, that's what we're going to do. So first things first, let's create ourselves a brand new container. And I'm just going to call this one TSIDP. It can be unprivileged. That is absolutely fine. I'm going to leave everything completely as stock otherwise. And the template I'm going to pick is Debian 12. I don't think it matters too much what you use. 8 gig should be fine. CPU, 2 CPU. This is just running on a small little Dell 1 liter PC, which is running on the rack behind me. You really don't need much to run this application. 2 gigs of memory is probably way overkill but I'm going to be running Docker inside the LXC, so I do want to just give it a little bit more breathing room. Now I'm going to select DHCP for IPv4, okay, and DNS and confirm, and it's going to create me an LXC container. Now we don't need to do anything unusual here. You know, sometimes we uh, install Tailscale inside the LXC and then install an app on top of it so that we can SSH into it and that kind of thing. This is a single purpose LXC, so I'm not going to bother installing Tailscale itself inside of this LXC so that it can remain unprivileged. I don't need to give it net ton device uh, privileges, that kind of thing. So um, very straightforward, really. We can just click on now the LXC that was created, click on console, get logged in, do the standard app update to refresh the package repositories, followed by app upgrade minus Y. This will take a few seconds to install all the latest packages in this, well, si since this image was, was baked by Proxmox uh, a few months ago. Now, whilst that's doing that, I'm going to go over to get.docker.com and get the script that I need to install Docker with. So I always like to copy this little command here. Docker like you to output this script to an install Docker shell script. I don't know. You can do this if you want to. This is what the Docker project recommend, but... I like doing things my own way. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I've got curl installed first of all, because Debian doesn't ship with curl out of the box because it's too bloaty. So I will now do curl, blah, 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 Docker URL, and then just pipe it to SH. This is going to install Docker inside this LXC environment that we're going to be using to run TSIDP. And then from here, all we're going to need is a very straightforward docker compose snippet. So I'm going to copy this onto my clipboard right here. The link to this GitHub repo, by the way, is in the description down below. Once Docker is installed, which takes a few seconds, um, I'm now going to create the um, compose.yaml file in the root of the root home users folder, um, and then just paste this in. That's all there is to it. All right. Now we need to modify this TS auth key line right here by providing a tail scale auth key. 
So if I go to my machines page, click on settings, keys, generate auth key. I'm going to call this TSIDP. I'm going to click on reusable, but you absolutely don't have to. I do that just because I'm making a video and I'll probably sprint it up two or three times with different takes. Um, but here's my auth key. Okay. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, go back to my Docker Compose YAML file. I'm going to change this word to be TS auth key with my uh, actual tail scale auth key now. And I think that's everything that we need to change. Just note here where it says TS hostname equals IDP. This is the name that your identity server will assume on your tailnet. So if we look under DNS, I think it is, at the top you've got your tailnet DNS name of Velociraptor-Noodlefish. Now you can rename that from the default. Mine was 6E5BF. You can roll custom names of something with a tail and something with scales. Um, then you also have to make sure that Magic DNS and HTTPS are turned on as well. Once you've done that, though, you are good to go. So here we are. Here is my completed file. I'm now going to do a Docker Compose pull, followed swiftly by a Docker Compose up. I'm going to do minus D so that it runs in the background. And then I'm going to follow the uh, logs of this container with a minus F. And now, hopefully, if we go to this URL, I'm going to do this in an incognito window. Tailscale is going to go out in the background and generate a TLS certificate for this domain. So it's going to reach out via Let's Encrypt, verify that you are the right person to be owning this domain, except we haven't quite finished. So the TLS certificate part worked just fine. And it, this is all part of the demo. Don't worry. <laughs> this is all planned. But we can go connection is secure, certificate is valid. And we can verify that Let's Encrypt has, has issued us a certificate from October 21st, which is today as I record, to January the 19th. Okay. But what does this mean? Application capabilities not granted. Well, this is a brand new feature that is, is pretty new to Tailscale in general, actually, and it's part of our um, grants feature. So back in the GitHub repo, I need you to scroll down a little further and look for the setting and application capability grant phase. Now, I'm just going to copy this entire code snippet here. But essentially what this is doing is it's giving this app of TSIDP the application level granular permissions to exist on my tailnet and allows my users to access certain things. Now, if you know you need to pass extra data through using this extra claims feature here, you can absolutely do that. If you, if you know you need this stuff, then you know you need it. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just ignore it. You don't, this, this bit here is completely optional. All right, so what we need to do is copy this stanza here from the readme, the entire grants block here. Obviously, if you already have a grants block, you need to inter interlace that with what you've already got. Uh, but let's just copy this entire section here and go to our access controls file. Now, you may very well end up landing on the visual policy, one of our brand new features that was launched as part of this week's Tailscale Fall update. But uh, we want to use the JSON editor, the old school editor. And I'm going to just find a nice spot for this just beneath ACLs and just paste in this entire grants block. Now, I also don't need this extra claims stuff. So I am just going to delete that and click save. And when I do, you'll notice that the Tailscale um, policy file engine actually automatically indents everything correctly for me and just makes my life easy. But now, instead of getting the um, error message of I can't load the IDP provider, now we get the actual web interface of the brand new TSIDP UI. So let's go ahead and add Proxmox now. Let's do add new client. And we're going to type in Proxmox here. I'm going to get the tail scale URL from here. Now be very careful. Do not include the trailing slash. It doesn't like that and then click on Create Client. We're going to need this client ID next. So we're going to go from here back to Proxmox and click on Data Center. Next, we're going to add a new realm. We're going to go into Open ID Connect Server. It's not what we want. <laughs> uh, we want the issuer URL, which is actually the domain name of the identity provider. So we're going to put this issuer URL in here and remove the trailing slash once more. Again, important. Now I'm going to call the realm TSIDP. This is effectively the name that you're giving to the 
the login item that's going to appear in your Tailscale drop down, uh, in your Proxmox drop down when you try and log in. Now I need my client ID. I was getting a little ahead of myself there, but client ID, boom, client secret. Here we go. Scopes default is fine. I'm not going to check the default box. This is the one that would make TSIDP the default option when you go and try and log into Proxmox. You may want to do that. Um, auto create users, we just want to select email and then everything else can stay as is. And with all of that said and done, let's now go to PVE and select our brand new realm, our brand new identity provider of TSIDP. Make sure you're logged in on the node in question to the correct tail net. You can see I'm logged in as a tail and scales at gmail.com on this laptop. It's now going to reuse my identity and log me into Proxmox. Easy as that, right? Except right now this user has no permissions. So let's go fix that. I am currently logged in as root in this window and logged in via TSIDP in this window. Okay, so the black window is TSIDP, the sort of tealy blue one. You can see up here I'm logged in as root. So we've got a couple of jobs to do. First of all, we need to create a group to put these users into. So let me create this one and just call it TS admins. Now I want to make sure that my user, a tail and scales, is part of said group. I now need to give this group permissions to be administrators. So it's kind of hidden, right? So this option here, permissions, is clickable. Okay, so I know it looks like it's a top heading. It it is, but it's also not. You can also click on it and do stuff. That tripped me up for a while. So hopefully I've saved you from a foot gun there. So we'll do permissions and then we'll click on add group permission. And I'm just going to select the path at the root of the API. Group is TS admins. And then I just want that group to be an admin. You may very well have a different way of operating. It depends on what your threat profiles are and all the rest of it. But you can see now if I switch back to my other window, voila, my a tail and scales at Gmail user now has administrator permissions over the cluster. That's the basics of setting up TSIDP with Proxmox. Of course, you can set TSIDP to work with any OIDC application. Indeed, I did a video about Pocket ID, which I'll link to up here earlier in the year, and I showed it with a bunch of other self hosted applications. Once you kind of get this bug of never having to log into anything ever again, it's uh, it's quite compelling. Now, we need to hear from you about what you're going to be using TSIDP for, and there is a plethora of ways you can get in touch with us, particularly this week with the fall update and everything, as, as this airs at least. This is airing as part of a, a big release week where we have uh, packaged up, you know, half a dozen major releases for Tailscale into one place. Um, but you can go to the Discord server, discord.gg slash Tailscale. There is a TSIDP channel over there. Remy from our strategic projects team would love to hear from you because he's put him and the team, it's not just Remy, but him and the team have put a huge amount of work into bringing this version of TSIDP uh, into, into life. He's adding the web UI and the custom Docker and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we need to know how you're hearing it because the reason that we put time and effort into these things is because people say to us, oh, I want to take Tailscale to work, but it doesn't do X. And so we add x and then we add y and z and q and whatever else our customers are asking us for so you can be part of that process part of that discussion by reaching out to us through the discord through the sales channels uh, registering for our webinars all that kind of stuff uh, this is the point as a youtuber where i should say like comment subscribe if you're not subscribed it would help channel out by the way but i typically don't say those things because i i figure that good content is good content and if it's good enough i don't need to tell you to do that so that's that's my goal that's my that's my social contract with you as the viewer i think i've run out of things to say until next time i want to say thank you very much for watching but i've been alex from tailscale